Good morning, Internet. We are testing or uh, the Newton Windsor Newton paper with our pigments. Um, I tested a a bit earlier, and I may show you that video in conjunction with this video um, or some edited version of that session but now when I put a heavy wash on the top paper and then then I pulled it off and I want to start again uh, the, the the block is damp and uh, and so I, I don't think um, I want to use it in that condition but I do want to test the paper so I'm going to take it off the block. You know, I, I know they say, well, you, you probably should tape, should stretch anything that's not on a block. And I like blocks, but since I have, I'm not patient enough to wait for this block to dry out, I'm just going to grab a, a seat from it. And, uh, and then start painting on it. And since I have it off the block, and I don't like to tape it down, I'm gonna wet both sides. So, here I go. I got my beaver badger brush. You should read Mike Chaplin's book, and he and he does discuss using the badger brush. So since I'm such a disciple of his, I had to get one. And this oh, brush. Uh, uh, is really bigger than your typical mop brush so uh, it really gets the paper on there now this was the back side we are continuing to test uh, the paper uh, the Windsor Newton paper and uh, we just did a little test by laying out just a small amount of my ultramarine the ultramarine is a pretty uh, potent. Um, it's uh, so that it's not coming out the way I'd like an ultramarine to work. Now I do have an ultramarine coming, uh, a French ultramarine pigment coming. But I do have the Daniel Smith Ultramarine here as well. Now, we can see here that this is the Ultramarine that I had made. And on the rough paper, it's really just sitting there. It's, and, uh, and I think that's because I, I, I'm not using it at an angle. Let me put it out. Well, we're back. We uh, made some adjustments on our test here, and uh, uh, and to reiterate, we put the ultramarine pigment down on the paper and. It, uh, I, I think the ox gall is having an effect and it is not dispersing well. Um, and of course it's not quite what I need. Yeah. Gotta fill up my washing machine my uh, brush wash 
machine. Alright, that's stand. That's soaking it up. Okay. There, I hear bubbling. Okay, so now my power washer is right there and I can clean my brush. I guess some of my methods um, are suited for the outdoors. <laughs> What if I re-wet? My the pigment I laid down. Oh, well, maybe I need to lay down some more. Okay, I've laid down some more pigment. Now I think at this point it's maybe wet on damp. I'll rework it and add more damp, <laughs> more wet. And I'm just doing it with my mop brush. I don't need to get the badger out. Okay, and now I think I'm going to do a horizon. And the horizon, I think, is going to be right here. And again, I'm going to put it on... with my ultramarine blue and you can see we've got action Now I just put the uh, the board at a at an angle at uh, about 30 degree angle. Uh, I've already the, the table itself is a uh, 30 degrees, a uh, uh, 10 degrees. So I think, uh, uh, and then we add to it this angle which is another 15 degrees so now I've got a probably about 25 degrees and let's see I, I think I'm now gonna add more blue sky blue sky above our clouds and then below in the distance we have blue sky
you can see some interaction. And of course, um, I'm utilizing painting to the very edge. But right now we have a monochrome painting going on. Betty, I think I want to use the capillary action to disperse my ultra marine blue for the ocean. And let's now try some light yellow ochre, also one of our handmade pigments. I think we're going to continue this, so I'm going to turn off the camera and we'll be back. Well, I'm back, and we've got a thoroughly wet Windsor and Newton 140 pound that came from a block. And we usually have a, a no humidity, but I, I believe a storm front is moving in and we're, we're, we're starting to get some humidity. And so my painting is not drying. And I'm, uh, according to the weather, Who needs Cupertino? New York. Okay, like what? 71 degrees out. And it's cloudy or partly cloudy right now. But I, I know that it's going to be cloudy tomorrow as well. And I'd seen a long range forecast says that a storm front is moving in. So I think our humidity is pretty starting to be higher than usual. So um, from our last episode or uh, last um, clip, which is part of the whole show here, um, I am having a problem. Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> with this paint drying and uh, I mean the cardinal rule is that you either keep it wet and keep working on it when it's wet or let it completely dry but when it's damp like it is right here it's really pretty much a, a you shouldn't do it but in any case I'm going to try, well, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the light yellow ochre and I'm going to see if I can paint a shoreline in here on damp, which you should never do. So I'm doing, I'm committing the cardinal sin on arguably the best paper. So I get semi hard lines depending upon how damp 
semi-hard edges on my paint. And you can see they are semi-hard. But in a way, that'll work for me. However, the real story is what will it look like? I'm going to put some burnt sienna down on our damp on damp Now I did our paint I need to mix it. I need to get some green in there because in fact um, what I want to create is a marsh called the Back Bay. And to do that, I actually need a green, and I have not. I, I think I'm, we're going to have to make some green. And how are we going to make green if we don't have yellow? Well, here's some yellow, Daniel Smith yellow. And yellow and blue. Can make a green but I'm uh, on my pigments I I need to get a green now here you can see that's still damp but I want to create the cliffs around the back bay and the marshes so we've got marshes going here, and again, I am committing the cardinal sin of painting on damp. But are those rules in abeyance when you use really good paper? There's a possibility that that's true. Now, by and large, my edge is not a sharp edge. And my but it, contrary to what I just said, I'm I'm on damp paper. And I've actually got edges. In fact, here's the, a place in the back bay that I want to create. Also, we've got some distant, from here at least, we have some distant, uh, yeah, I, I gotta get this. More like that. And I've got some dark edges going. But we've got some distant distant hills in the back. Let's reach out. Now here I have mixed uh, Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Medium with my ultra handmade ultramarine blue. So we're getting a pretty nice green going on. Now one thing I do want to do is we have some white cliffs of the back bay 
and they happen right here. So the white cliffs of Newport. <laughs> I just put my finger right here, which it's all wet. It's not taped down, and it's doing a little curly curling, but that's would be expected. And how can I wash? Let's see. Come on, tell me I have a scrubber. That's okay. Not much scrubbing going on there. Put a little water on it. Uh, I'm afraid we're gonna, since I didn't block that out or mask it out, we're gonna have trouble doing the white cliffs of Newport Beach, Back Bay. Uh, so, of course, um, they're not following Victorian rules, or even the rules of wet on damp. Um, but the uh, Newton, Windsor Newton paper rough is holding up. It's <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, it's a wonderful paper. I couldn't say enough about it. I want to get some distant, kind of a muddy, faint area beyond here uh, and actually that's going to work again damp on damp and here we see we've got some of our uh, we've, we've got the Hasna yellow component of uh, the green we made from and it it's an accident that looks wonderful usually not actually an accident this is something I'd hoped for now here we can't actually see out to the open sea uh, and this is a peninsula over here and it's part of it leads up to the Balboa Peninsula Usually I should just wait until all of this dries Before I do any more painting Hmm. The sky is damp. I'm going to try a rigger. Oh, I can't find a rigger. Okay. There's a rigger. And I'm going to use an umber on the cliffs. And that is really what we see. And then we see as you can see we are still getting hard edges even with damp on damp. It's, um, it's possible, it's a function of this paint that you can violate some of those rules if you're using good paper. A lot of ifs involved there, but uh, there's just a small shoreline there. 
and so we can put that in. This was the inspiration for this is from a photograph I took while I was bicycling on the back bay. Got a nice bike trail there. And I've done several versions of these views now. We're getting dry. But that's an interesting uh, occurrence. In, in fact, that's what they say about wet on damp, is that you, you can have surprises. And uh, yeah, I can see so I'm the cliffs. I'm re-wetting an area because these cliffs are, they, they've got a lot of vegetation that grows on these cliffs so I could use some of the green that we created I can't see it. Uh, I, it doesn't bother me about not being able to lift so that's completely white on those <laughs> otherwise white cliffs of Newport. No one calls them that. <laughs> I invented it. But we do have a lot of cliffs and basically it's a sandstone and uh, And people build right onto the edge of them. So we've got the little burnt sienna. And I'm going to Well, we are 
painting a lot of what we see up on these cliffs, which is greenery combined with some natural brown. <coughs> and okay, I think we have a lot done here, but let's uh, really. I, I wish I could cheat and get a nice green, um, but to make do with what we get, have here, because of my testing, but I really need to, to make a green from a, a natural, and, and there are hundreds of pigments available from the French pigment vendor. Imagine that, selling dirt for a living, grinding it up and distributing it across the globe. Now, what I, what I could do is re-wet it's damp they can re-wet these areas and 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 try to get a, a reflection going equipment test <coughs> there's my rigger here's my flat scrubber a five gallon bucket of clear water and I'm making an effort to make it muddy again but let's see if we re-wet it around the edge here and Well, I, I don't think we can beat that any Daniel Smith paint. So you would think my entire experiment here is a failure. An experiment with pigments. So I wouldn't rely, and I'm not relying, on handmade pigments myself. But we've got a nice edge to the marsh here. And we can layer small washers. And we can get Let's get a little bit of a Okay, and you can see it's uh, I've re-wetted it, and we've, we've got a little bit of a reflection going, a reflection of the marsh, 
And then we've, uh, of course, got a reflection above. And what we've got here on a shoreline is a lot of vegetation. And I am just taking some of the what I've got and you can see There's actually a little, didn't know I'd be able to do it, but there's a little uh, drainage from our infrastructure flowing into the back bay. And it is really the storm drains that drain all the way down to the back bay. I'm able to lift it. And this is lifting a mixture of the green we created. And and this I'm lifting it with a flat number six uh, brush. And in fact, there's some reflection going on here. We've got sort of a, on one part of the back bay here, we've got sort of a beach. Uh, actually, over around the corner here, we've got the Back Bay Aquatic Center. It used to be called the um, Olympic Aquatic Center, because it was created for um, 1986 Olympics. However, now it's just the Olymp uh, the Back Bay Aquatic Center, and we get a lot of people, a lot of skulls, and. Well, I got ants, and it's probably because of that honey in my ink. See if I can get a something going here, a little dry. No, we have lifted. Thank you. 
We just have a lot of nice granulation going on. Well, wondering if we can mix the ochre with a little bit of umber. <laughs> Maybe a lot of that light ochre. And get a I know when I frame this, and if I frame this, <laughs> yeah, it's not a foregone conclusion that we are producing real art here. We can come back later and get even more details going here. But for now, for now, I, I realize I'm not <laughs> uh, very close to the mic. I suppose I should connect a lapel. I have about a dozen lapel mics. <laughs> I don't know why. I just keep buying stuff. No, I think we should let that dry and then come back in and put some details. We'll be right back. <laughs> 